Colt, like we were talking about just now, thanks for joining the show. And if you're a Baylor fan or an analyst out there, there's a lot of excitement over this hire. Yeah, there absolutely should be as well. I mean, this, this has kind of been a long time coming. Um, Jeff Grimes was the initial candidate that we heard. I mean, truthfully, uh, probably before uh, Larry Fedora was, was let go, this was a name that everyone said, hey, we're looking at Jeff Grimes as potentially the next offensive coordinator if Larry Fedora gets a head job. And, uh, and the fact that, that we are where we are now is a huge deal. This is a guy that's established. He's been around the block. I mean, you look back to 2000, the year 2000, he was at Boise State in year 2000 uh, having successful um, uh, stops. And he's you know been at BYU uh, twice. He had successful times there. Um, and he's he was at LSU as well. And, and so you, you have a guy that's going to come in that's established and you can recruit on the offensive line. If you you look back at what he did on the offensive line recruiting wise you're going to have a lot you're going to find a lot of success there and not that he's going to bring in all these blue chip guys to Baylor but he brings immediate immediate credibility Colt what can you tell us about assistant coaches he's going to bring in here I think that's what everyone wants to know is hey who comes with Grimes right now yeah, I mean, the first one is Sean Bell as the, the quarterback coach. Mm -hmm. And you have a guy that uh, has been at the Baylor, been, been at Baylor for forever, essentially, from the time that he played. Uh, he, he's been a Baylor guy through and through. He remained on the staff uh, after uh, uh, Matt Rule went to the NFL, and now he is still here. And, and he's a guy that would survive multiple coaching staffs, right? I, I think that he would be there uh, regardless. I think that he, because he can recruit, because he's a valuable assistant, everyone's going to want to keep him, especially when you consider the fact that he's going to love Baylor no matter what. That's where he wants to be. If he's the head coach or the offensive coordinator in the future, I would not be surprised. That might be 10, 15 years from now, but he's a, he's that type of person that could stay there and be a, a, a lifelong guy. So that's the number one is he's going to be the quarterback coach. Um, you look at the other positions, though, I don't think anything's definite at this point. I think that you're going to have contract situations to negotiate. You're going to have to have HR things to go through, but they don't get to this point without having an idea. The first one, uh, y'all mentioned him earlier, and we really haven't even been out in the public, is is a guy from Clemson in uh, Chauncey Stuckey, and he's a, a former NFL receiver. Uh, he has the ability to come in and recruit really well. You, you look at his success that he has had, um, at, or Clemson has had it with receivers, and, and he's going to be able to feed off that and also sell uh, his ability the, to play in the NFL and the things that he learned in the NFL. So it's very similar to what Matt Rule did uh, in bringing in guys and not, not only coached in the NFL, but also played in the NFL. So those are the two that, that are the big ones. Now, what does he do on the offensive line? We're really not sure. What does he do at strength and uh, conditioning coordinator? Uh, we're really not sure yet. But but those two specifically, they retain Juice Johnson, uh, who everyone loves. He's a great recruiter. And uh, you're looking at a staff now that's going to be made up of recruiters, not only just coaches, but recruiters and you have to you survive with recruiting at the college football game so with a guy like grimes one of the things that's been very popular on the forum for sikkim 365 premium users is asking the question do you want an offensive coordinator who's a play caller or a developer where does jeff grimes fall between those two categories Ah, I mean, that's it's a great question. I think he has. I think he has the ability to do both. I think that you look at what he did at BYU um, and the way that he developed that offensive line to what they were this year, uh, exceptional. You look back to when he was at Auburn. Uh, you look at you look at 2010. Now he's an offensive line coach at Auburn, but that was when they won the national championship uh, with Cam Newton, et cetera. So they had a lot of talent there and put those guys in position to succeed. But you look at what he did at, at LSU as a run game coordinator. Um, he has a lot of. Um, uh, you know, skins on the wall in regards to a lot of different areas. Now, is that because he had great talent like Cam Newton that he had so much success on the offensive line or Zach Wilson, et cetera? I, I think this is a guy that is going to prove a little bit more of who he is at Baylor because of the unique situation. You're never going to recruit to the likes of Texas A&M. You're never going to recruit to the likes of Texas. You can have more success, uh, but I don't think he's ever going to going to elevate himself to that level at Baylor uh, as far as recruiting five star, four star guys. But you look at BYU, and he did it really. He he had similar say similar talent to the competition that he was playing, and he was able to scheme guys up. So I'm anxious to see how he handles this at Baylor. Um, I, I think it just brings immediate credibility though you have a guy that's fresh off of a huge season uh, at BYU and uh, he, he has the ability to sell a lot and I think he's going to get recruiters and coaches around him that can sell that same vision and obviously uh, like like you guys know and, and like I know Baylor's a great place and he has the ability to sell that uh, with guys around him that know that same that same mission Colt riffing on that Baylor being a great place I'm assuming there was 
probably a lot of people that wanted this offensive coordinator job. What was it about Grimes that gave Aranda and Mac Rhodes the, the inclination, okay, hey, this is our guy? Because it sounds like this was a one-man race from the jump. No other names were, were circulating as far as we know. What was it about Grimes that made Baylor pull the trigger? Yeah, I mean, there was really not any other names. I mean, you heard like names like Matt Canada, who overlaps with with Aranda at LSU. Uh, you heard names uh, like uh, the Henson, offensive line coach Henson at, at Texas A&M. But this was a name that was established there from the beginning, uh, and, and they dis- we discussed it a lot. But we didn't know the name wasn't leaking until one night. I actually got some measures like, hey, this is circulating uh, pretty heavily. But the fact that it never made it to Twitter, it never made it to social media, uh, that was an indication to me that this is probably a little more serious. Because you look back to the head coaching search uh you know justin fuente his name popped up and everyone's like, oh it's justin fuente mm-hmm. well that that was leaked by someone that mac Rhodes didn't want to leak or he, he they he was out of the running and, and his name got leaked and, and so his name blew up but he wasn't really ever in contention this this situation was entirely different i think this was mac Rhodes has a process so everyone's well, why didn't they hire him uh, when BYU season was over? Well, I think Mac Rhodes had a process. I think there was other people who were interviewed. I think they used all of their resources. Uh, and then it's also the ability to put the staff together um, and having guys who are um, position coaches that they can have in line to announce. Um, maybe not immediately, but they will be. So I think it's just a matter of having all the ducks in a row. Uh, and you know, I can't say that other guys weren't interviewed, weren't weren't discussed, but these were guys who were. Um, and Jeff Grimes, he was a guy that was on there from the beginning because of the, his connection with Dave Aranda and his connection to the region. Moving off of that, with Grimes coming in, it seems like you have a conglomerate of folks that are, are retained and new guys coming in that maybe Grimes or Aranda have ties to. What can you nail down right now as far as the offensive staff goes that we know will be on the sidelines next season? Yeah, that's a great question. Obviously, Baylor hasn't announced uh, some of these hires, um, but the, Sean Bell is going to be retained. Obviously, we knew that when he wasn't fired, um, and, and that's not surprising at all. Uh, so he'll be the quarterback coach. Juice Johnson will remain at running backs for all, uh, from all indications. He'll remain there, which makes sense. He's a great recruiter. Uh, he's at a position that he's familiar with the personnel. Uh, and, and when you have a great recruiter like that, him, him and Sean both, you don't want to, you don't want to unplant them because they're going to be valuable anywhere they're going to go and get another job uh, as soon as you let them go so you have two guys like that and then like i mentioned uh, chauncey stuckey uh, coming from clemson that has not been official uh, there's a lot of speculation on that and we feel comfortable reporting it or we wouldn't have and, and he'll be the receivers coach and you look at his background and it's phenomenal but he's also another guy that's going to be a great recruiter and obviously he, he understands the game playing at the highest level that he did he also played at clemson played football at clemson uh, so he has a lot of good background uh, then you also uh, you talk about what happens with joe wickline uh, we're not really sure he was retained when when larry fedora and jorge uh, or george munoz was fired let go and uh he was retained so i think there will be a change there i'm anxious to see what happens um we don't know for sure so i don't want to speculate too much there's names that are floating out there and if you want to know more about that you can get on second 365 premium and check it out i love that plug first of all drake and i talked <laughs> about this a little bit prior to to having you on but i want to hear your take on this if i'm a baylor fan i'm thinking okay we got a new offensive coordinator but what's going to be different about this offense a lot of the same guys are still there outside of charlie brewer how will this offense look different under grimes well i mean first off you're going to be replacing a lot on the offensive line and that's that's depending on your point of view that's encouraging or discouraging you're going to be replacing jason moore who started eight games at center um who, who retired to injury uh, you're going to be replacing uh, jake burton who's going to try a shot at the nfl and you're going to be placing potentially blake betty we haven't got official confirmation on that yet uh, as you're starting right tackles so you're replacing a lot so that in and of itself could be um, a good thing or a bad thing depending on how they were replaced um, and, and that's what I'm looking at specifically is how does Grimes adjust his offensive line in year one I think that he'll have an impact the offensive scheme could have an impact but I, I you know we, everyone kind of got out ahead of their skis including myself about Larry Fedora's offense last year and saying this scheme could help the offensive line well it, it obviously didn't we didn't see that so what does Jeff Grimes do I think it, it, it predicates on who's brought in on the offensive line, who's brought in as a grad transfer, who's brought in as a junior college transfer, uh, what what they're able to do with Jacob Zeno or Gary Bohannon or Blake Shapin or Kyron Jones. I mean, who is a quarterback? You know, that's going to be decided in the spring. We don't really know a lot about those guys. So there's obviously a lot of skill position players who should be returned that should be excited about this staff, uh, seeing based on what they did at BYU this year. Um, I just don't know. I want to see a spring, and, and then we'll de- we'll determine that will point give us a significant indicator of exactly where this offense will go and how good it can be uh, next fall but as we know the defense should be good enough 
that, that an average offense can make this team a lot better. Colt, last question for you here before we get into some bear games for you as well. We've got a question on the YouTube chat line. Colt, is Zeno the day one starter? And I think that kind of goes into a quarterback game. Is Grimes a guy who's going to come in and force a quarterback battle from day one? And is Baylor's quarterback room built for that right now? Man, I, I don't – it's so hard to say. I think that Jacob Zeno has the talent. I think that there's other guys on the on the roster that have the talent as well. Um, you look at Gary Bohannon, and everyone I know there's discussion on him uh, changing positions, et cetera, but he was, he was firmly the number two guy before he left the program for a week to return home for a little while, which I can't blame him for doing that. He was firmly the number two guy uh, – in, in last season's offense. So there's going to be a competition. And I think the dark horse might be Blake shape. And you have a, a red shirt freshman, actually, truthfully, he's a true freshman considering it's a year back. So he'll have multiple years. He's a guy that could compete. And if you're, if you're Jacob Zeno and you're Gary Bohannon and you look at a guy like that, like you say, I'm going to be pushed no matter what. I have two other guys. I have another guy that's directly across from him, but there's a guy in the back seat that's saying, Hey, I want this job too. And he's going to be phenomenal. He's going to be a really good baseball player. So that could play an impact into it. Um, I think Jacob Zeno from a, from a pure quarterback stance, he has the upper hand. I don't know how that plays out during the spring. I'm anxious to see it just as much as anybody. I think that he's going to have to develop mentally a little bit, but I think Baylor's going to be in a good position with the quarterback come next year. And then you look at the track record of Jeff Grimes when he was at BYU with with, uh, with Zach and, and the way that he progressed over a couple of years. So I'm anxious to see what happens. Colt, your expert opinion. Thanks so much for bringing that on, talking Jeff Grimes, the new Baylor offensive coordinator, a splash hire if you ask just about anybody, and you had it from day one. So glad to have your analysis, especially knowing how well this guy is is really respected and revered across college athletics. So now i got to get your other professional opinion. Preston Ebner or Laquan Here McGowan, it Colt? Here it goes. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it's gonna, it's tough. I, I think because of the fanfare that that Laquan McGowan oh. brings, that he's gonna be a fan favorite. But I'm going with Ebner. I mean, you you wow. can't replace a guy that wow. makes so much impact. Cinderella is you dancing. Can't replace a guy that makes so much impact in so many different areas. Uh, he's an All American. I don't think Laquan ever got All American, but I love oh. Laquan. I mean, the, what he brought, what he brought uh, to the table, uh, the excitement that he brought in a, in a couple of years where. Uh, Baylor's having a lot of fun on the football field, man. He was, he was entertaining, but Tristan Ebner talent wise, unbelievable. And I'm anxious to see him in this offense. You look at a B, you talk about a, a guy that fits the BYU or that scheme, go look at the stats that the, the BYU running backs had, um, in, in the ability oh, yeah. to catch the ball. And run the oh, yeah. ball. They were oh, catching yeah. tons of passes. They're used everywhere. Explosive plays. Uh, he, he's a, he's Taylor. It's almost like he knew that he was going to have a great opportunity with this staff, but he didn't have a clue. It was going to be hired, but he fits in perfectly with that staff. Let's go a little Let's nostalgia go. here. Tevin Reese or Bryce Hager. Well, I think I discussed this one with you, Drake. Uh, yeah. I texted you about this when I was looking. I was like, man, I love Bryce Hager. And, and I, I love Tevin Reese, but Bryce Hager, he's still kicking in the NFL. He's still doing great in the NFL. He had eight, 18 tackles the last two weeks um, for the Jets as a starter. Uh, and he's still hanging around the NFL, but his four-year, five-year career at Baylor was was phenomenal. He ended up being hurt his last year a little bit. He didn't get to finish it like he wanted to. But I'm going with Bryce Hager on this one. I think Dang. that he was so valuable in a stretch uh, for Baylor. Uh, so was Tevin Reese, but I think when Baylor really needed some defense, Bryce Hager, Eddie Lackey, uh, they, they contributed so much to those 2013, 2014 big 12 championships that it's hard to overlook. So one a 50 piece Lake you throw the ball to Reese or Eddie Lackey right. here. That's right. That's so true. this, this is like a toss up, like 100% a toss up for me because I, I look at Eddie Lackey was a playmaker, just a pure straight up playmaker. Um, and you look at Lake Singstrunk, same deal, opposite side of the ball. But I go back to how valuable were, were they to their teams in the moment. Lake Singstrunk in 2012 was hands down the most valuable player. He, he Baylor went from probably not a bowl team to a to a the hottest team in the country at the end of the year when they when they put him in the in the run game, um, when they really started playing him. But Eddie Lackey was so such a staple playmaker for that defense when they really needed it. Um, I, that's who that's who my my vote goes to and, and that's not I love offense I, I love the Me ability too. to uh, create plays but Eddie Lackey Bryce Hager that that I don't know if they're I know there's been against some good linebackers here lately but that duo as far as college playmakers was was phenomenal and fun to watch the end all be all Colt do you call it cheese dip or you call it queso 
queso. I don't think I've ever called it cheese dip in my Jeez. life. So. I think there's a trend. You guys are the here. worst. I think this is gonna go a certain is this way. Is an that Arkansas you thing? It's an Arkansas thing. Everybody in Arkansas I think it's says a California cheese thing dip. Too. Nobody from Arkansas has called it's in California yet. California thing too. I'm Drake Toll. He's JD Pakel. That's Colt Barber. We've got Armstrong's minute coming up. We're gonna run that one more time, and then as soon as we come back after that quick, quick spot, we've got a very special guest, Jake Olson, to talk about the Steve Sarkeesian hire. Remember that blind guy that played at USC? Yeah, we yeah. got him. Colt Barber, thanks so much for coming on the show and talking Jeff Grimes, Baylor's new offensive coordinator. Again, I'm Drake Toll, J.D. Pakel, Armstrong Sims. That was Colt Barber, and this is Up Tempo.